The Mercedes GLB delivers to market the first properly practical mid-sized SUV from the three-pointed star. There's enough room for seven seats, enough capability for light off-road excursions, and enough of a premium feel to make other class rivals feel rather low rent. In short, it's a potentially appealing package. Pretty much all the engineering in play here was developed originally for frugal family hatchbacks and not go anywhere Jalandewagens. Still, it's reassuring to know that it's been evolved a bit for this GLB, a longer wheelbase combined with a wider track and the stiffer body. Plus, the raised suspension is of the sophisticated uh, rear multi-link variety uh, that only the most expensive and powerful versions of Mercedes smaller models normally tend to get all of which helps to mitigate the roly-poly handling that you might expect a relatively compact, tall, boxy SUV to deliver. We are a bit less impressed with the ride. Uh, that can't be embellished with the adaptive damping system that is available in other markets, but all of the available mainstream choices are pleasingly refined. These are mated to a selection of dual-clutch automatic transmissions. Things kick off with the Renault Drive's 163 horsepower 1.3 litre petrol unit uh, mated to a 7 speed auto and fitted to the base GLB 200. But you might conceivably feel that a car of this sort has no business sharing an engine with a Clio Super Mini, in which case your dealer will direct you instead to the gutsier 2 litre diesel we're trying here, which works in concert with an 8 speed auto and comes in a couple of guises. Uh, there's a GLB 200D which offers 150 horsepower and can be had in either front driven or formatic form or the formatic only GLB 220D variant we're trying here which offers 190 HP and a decent balance of performance and WLTP rated efficiency up to 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 156 grams per kilometer of CO2. For wild families, there's also a high-performance Mercedes-AMG GLB 35 formatic flagship version, which offers a 306 horsepower 2-litre petrol turbo unit uh, from the A35 hot hatch, and that's capable of powering the car to 62 in just 5.2 seconds. And you can also talk to your dealer about plug-in hybrid and full electric derivatives too. Mainstream GLB models can be had with an optional off-road engineering package if off-piece tracks might occasionally be on your agenda. And upper spec versions get all of the brand's latest camera-driven safety and semi-autonomous drive technology too. The look of the GLB draws inspiration from Mercedes Grand G-Class Gelandewagen, uh, which you need to know because otherwise you really might wonder why it's quite so squarical and van-like. Even designer Robert Lesnick describes it as a box with rounded edges. Uh, the dimensions are a little confusing too. This car is actually uh, almost the same size as the GLC model that supposedly sits beneath in the Mercedes SUV lineup. Uh, the GLB is 4.63 meters long and that sees it measuring in only 21 millimeters shorter than a GLC and it's actually 18 mils taller than that car. Okay time to check out the part of the car that Mercedes promises will really sell it to you, the interior. In its own way, this cabin is as distinctive as the boxy silhouette, with architecture that's shaped by the avant-garde design of the dashboard, and all of it fashioned into an interior with neat little SUV touches, like the aluminium look tubular element on the dashboard there on the passenger side, and the horizontal grab handle that's been fitted to each door. It's supposed to resemble a milled aluminium tube. Some features are of course familiar from other modern Mercedes, primarily this distinctive widescreen cockpit layout with its twin virtual displays, one for the centre stack and the other for the instrument binnacle. Now, Depending on trim level, these will either be 7 inches or as in this case 10.25 inches in size and they can be activated by prodding on the monitors, by various neat touch pads or by the provided Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality. Now you might be a little disappointed to find that the black leather stitched comfort seats position you only a fraction higher than you would be in the brand's other compact models but uh, some compensation comes in the way that you're surrounded by premium touches like these intricately fashioned double stitched door cards here. 
and these circular silver jet engine style vents which decorate the dash and which are an integral part of the classy ambient lighting system which brings the interior alive at night. Luxury downsizers will love this. Time to take a seat in the second row. Space-wise, it's actually not too bad back here. It's helped enormously by the fact that this bench base can be slid uh, backwards and forwards over a range of 140 millimetres, 90 mils to the front and 50 mils to the rear. Plus, the seats uh, back here are mounted a bit higher than those at the front, which gives a better view forward and out of the side windows. And that might help with travel sickness for younger folk. What about the third row seating? Well, you don't have to have it, provided you're happy to have your GLB in 220D formatic form. Mercedes will also offer you a five seat only version, but we can't really see why you wouldn't want those extra rearmost chairs. Third row legroom is as restricted as the class norm too. Now, as usual with a seven seat SUV, you sit uh, with your knees up towards your stomach and a headroom is at well, something of a premium, let's say. In fact, Mercedes says it really isn't safe for someone over 1.68 metres in height to be sat back here at all. Finally, we'll take a look at the boot, and that's accessed via a standard Easy Pack powered tailgate. But on this plusher variant, can be activated by a wave of your foot beneath the bumper uh, if you happen to be uh, approaching your GLB all laden down with child seats and uh, other paraphernalia like shopping bags. Obviously, there won't be very much space to play with if all three rows are in use, just 130 litres. So in this kind of configuration, you'll be limited to carrying a few shopping bags and not a lot else. Most of the time though, you're gonna be traveling with these rearmost chairs folded into the floor, uh, a simple action activated by pulling on these red straps. That'll improve cargo capacity to at least 500 liters with the second row backrest pushed right back towards you. There is as much as 640 liters available if you're able to push it right forward, however. If you're able to flatten the second row in this seven seat model, you can free up as much as 1,055 liters or as much as 1,680 liters if you load to the roof. At first glance, you might think the GLB an unnecessary further addition to the Mercedes SUV lineup. After looking closely at what it has to offer, we've ended up concluding though that going forward, it's likely to be a vital part of it. The brand has never before offered a car in this class that's really practical for a growing family, yet remains reasonably affordable. This is it. And in summary, well, you probably won't have started off wanting a GLB in this class, but take a closer look and it's hold on you might grow. Hip to be square, there's something in that.